All right, guys, today we are going to be breaking from the normal um, survival and outdoor videos where I typically talk about either really cool knives or saws, hatchets, axes, all the fun stuff. It, but today we are going to be talking about something that's probably equally, if not sometimes more important, and we are going to be focusing on footwear for winter and particularly coastal winter survival, bushcrafting, and wilderness living. And this is something that as I have changed locations in Alaska, I've really wanted to kind of bring some different survival and outdoor content because the place that that I typically lived in interior Alaska is typically very dry. So in that previous environment, I would typically wear in the winter um, some form of mukluks. These are, and I have two different pairs of stegers, but this is a steger mukluk, and I'm blanking on the name of it, but I think it's a Yukon, and basically it just has a you know high denier um, nylon top to it with a lower moose hide um, portion, and of course there is a wool on the interior, you guys can see here. These will keep your feet very toasty, and in drier or more arid winter environments, those are typically what I would run, either those or my other more traditional stickers. Um, and I actually prefer my more traditional stickers just because they have a higher kind of gaiter to them. And also, um, I just like the style more. And so it was more of a personal preference. But anyways, um, those were what I would typically run. However, when working in a more or just being out in a more coastal um, environment, typically speaking, winters are quite a bit different. And especially where I'm at now. Um, there's a lot of like in the winter where I'm at now, there, the temperatures don't just dip down below freezing and stay below freezing. There's a lot of freeze thaw, freeze thaw. And typically speaking, the daytime temperatures will be anywhere from 34 to 35 above to about 28 to 27 above. And this is one of those golden areas in survival that is actually hated by many of us, myself included. And the reason why this um, temperature range is so hated is because when you're bouncing between freeze thaw, um, it makes everything you wear very susceptible to becoming cold soaked. So like I said, today we're in particular talking about footwear because footwear is probably inarguably in my opinion and I think in many people's opinions the most important part of properly staying alive because if you lose your ability to walk especially as a bipedal human you are pretty much given or signed off to a death sentence. You probably will not survive very long if you cannot walk or move. Uh, movement is also important, really important for generating body heat naturally. So the ability to move is incredibly important, especially for survival and wilderness activities. So today we're going to be talking about what I typically wear in winter time in a coastal environment. So like I said, in particular coastal environments and truthfully anywhere where you deal with a lot of what I just said of the freeze thaw type of temperatures. So that is your anywhere from about 20 above to about 40 above. This range is where if like naturally like most temperatures, it will be fluctuating somewhere in between this range. But in this type of range, um, you are going to be dealing with primarily very slushy snow, you're going to be dealing with ice, and you're going to be dealing with a environment that retains snow, but that that snow quickly melts. And so if you have anything on your person or if you are wearing anything um, like on your person that retains water or moisture, you are going to be in a world of hurt very quickly. Now, like I said, footwear is probably the most important part of this equation because there are a lot of things you can do to mitigate, say, your butt touching the snow, right? There's a lot of things you can do to mitigate your feet, your legs, or sorry, not your feet, but your legs, your arms, your torso, your head from touching the snow, right? There's a lot of things we can do to mitigate those, but unfortunately, if you are a bipedal human, there's very few things that you can do to mitigate your feet touching the snow or the ground that is conversely covered in snow. So having a really bomb-proof footwear is 
very important. And this is something that I don't actually see a lot uh, talked about on YouTube, unfortunately. Um, th there are some people, especially Grantham, who talked about, you know, owning the wilderness or owning the mountains. And I really, as an Alaskan who spends a lot more time, not to be rude to people like Grantham, but as an Alaskan who spends a lot more time in the snow, snowy months and regions, I was pretty disappointed with his um, going over uh, of footwear and so essentially with Grantham he probably had the most comprehensive talk about footwear in Arctic environments but his solution was essentially to wear something along the lines of this Steger Muckluck. His were a little bit different and they were like Gore-Tex footwear. They're a little bit more modern but they were essentially along the lines of wear something like this Steger and keep snow seal on them. And this is a valiant option that is typically what I do in an arid winter environment is that I will wear something like my Steegers and of course keep something like snow seal or some form of waterproofing on them. Now the thing that rightfully so Grantham brought up in his video was that you do have to apply that very frequently and that is because once again shoes have a lot of movement, you're moving around in them, you're troughing through snow, and anything, any type of coating, any type of exterior application of substance on any shoe or pant or shoe, like shirt or anything like that, for that matter, is going to wear off and wear off probably faster than you're expecting. And I've definitely encountered that with my Steegers. So if you do choose to run a permeable boot, something like a Steeger or something like a hiking shoe, you you are going to really need to keep up on snow seal or some form of waterproofing wax substance. This is why when I started working or started you know, doing things down here in a more coastal environment, I very quickly, not to say that I don't use my Steegers, I do use them. And I do um, in certain applications, especially in high alpine and very cold uh, conditions, I will still use my Steegers and they do have an application we'll get into in a little bit. But for the most part, I have made the jump over to things like Boggs. These are of course the Boggs brand, but really any type of waterproof boot, something like Extra Tufts, Boggs, Muck, um, any of these brands that are more reputable are going to make really solid boots and a lot of them come in insulated variants. Now of course if you're going to be operating in the 20 degree to 40 degree range you're going to want an insulated boot but water boots in my opinion are some of the best or not quite water boots but what most people probably consider something like a puddle boot like what you're seeing here is going to be one of the most optimal survival and just will Wilderness, um, shoes that you can choose and a lot of luckily nowadays a lot of companies like extra tough like bogs like muck make really good sole patterns for treading in different you know like environments like not just you know on ice or in like puddles or you know like wet you know marshlands but a lot of them are more kind of mountain geared so you can you know tread on rocky gravelly environments that are just snow covered with a good amount of grip these ones included have a good amount of of grip on them and so <clears throat> when it comes down to it um, really going for an impermeable boot is going to be the end solution because if you truly try to operate especially for any duration of time like if you're out for multiple days you will quickly find out that trying to keep your shoes snow sealed and trying to keep them waxed can be done, but it is a very tedious process, especially when these types of boots exist. And so these are what you're optimally going to want to be aiming for. Something that is an insulated, impermeable, impermeable boot, if I can speak today, um, is going to be optimal. And the reason why this is, is once again, you don't have to treat them. They are going to be absolutely waterproof. And I think that's a big kind of misconception, even with something like these um, Steegers here, they are are great boots don't get me wrong you can absolutely put snow seal on them you can put different you know types of coatings on them to help make them semi 
impermeable, but this shoe here, being that it's made of what it's made out of, will never be impermeable. And so what I am trying to get at is in, in environments with that range between 20 and 40 degrees, you will be looking at potentially, you know, crossing um, bodies of water that you may not see that may be snow concealed, like a small stream or creek that you may not see because it's concealed by a light sheet of ice that's covered by snow that you step on. And if this goes through and gets into water, like actually gets into water, you can have snow seal on this and it's still going to get through. Now the advantage to this to an extent is that you do have wool, like you have wool in here in the lining. So wool still retains a lot of heat. I want to say it's about 80% of its heat retention even when wet. However, that's more of a you need to get out of dodge type situation where you, if you do become uh, water soaked in something like sneakers, you need to be actively moving to a dry environment or, you know, a situation where you can dry those boots out. They're not the type of thing where if you accidentally step through a creek and, you know, land in water in something like these bogs, it's not a huge deal at all because this is, of course, rubber and is going to 100% keep out any snow, any water, any moisture, any humidity is going to be kept out of these boots. Now I do particularly like the neoprene typed boots like you see here. Once again, bogs and mucks do this more than extra tufts. And this is simply because neoprene, which is this upper material you see here, is a very awesome material because it is very, very water um, exclusionary. Like it excludes water very well, but still allows a good amount of breathability. This is why things like bunny boots are a bit of a pain in the butt to run in the winter because they are incredibly good at keeping heat in but they also keep a lot of moisture in because they are 100% rubber they are 100% plastic they do not breathe at all like in the slightest so they are very good at keeping your feet warm but they also don't allow your feet to breathe at all so Bunny boots are something that we can definitely dig, dig into more in a future conversation, but by and large, speaking of modern water boots or puddle boots or rain boots, whatever you want to call these guys, going with an insulated um, form of these that have a neoprene upper, as you can see to this, is going to allow your feet to still breathe within reason, and it's also going to allow you to have a very high level of water impermeabil impermeability, something along those lines basically the water won't get through. And so that's what really counts if you're actually trekking and hiking around. Now I will say, when it comes to hiking and trekking in these types of boots, even the best, most well geared towards hiking and outdoors are still going to be a far cry from actual hiking shoes. So these do require a kind of slower pace and definitely a they're a learned type of hiking in these. They're not the most comfortable, unfortunately, but when it comes down to it, um, in wintry environments, you absolutely cannot put a price on having dry feet. And so even in my opinion, at least sacrificing, you know, the mobility and maneuverability of a nicer hiking or trail running shoe is totally worth it in the winter environments to guarantee that you will absolutely have warm dry feet and really just dry feet in general because I think there is this misconception in that some people may not love these shoes as much in this regard because these don't tend to be as insulative as some other shoes like the sneakers I'm presuming that they're dry but once again dry feet are warm feet even if it's not you know inherently obvious your body does make heat so if you can keep your feet dry by and large and obviously some people make body heat easier than others and some retain body heat easier than others but by and large speaking for 99 percent of humans you know a dry foot is it going to be a warm foot in the long run um, so that's why i think it is a really solid choice to go over to things like bogs mucks um even extra tufts it just makes a lot of sense to go over to a puddle boot or a rain boot um, once again a lot of companies like bogs and muck make insulated winter versions that are even rated down to negative 40 and i will say this much i would be wary about wearing these types of boots in extreme cold temperature like negative 30 negative 40. i do not think any of these boots are going to be particularly apt at keeping your feet 
warm at those temperatures. However, this is specifically, um, to just to add a final level of clarity, this is specifically talking about footwear for temperatures ranging between 20 and 40 above. In those temperature ranges, having a high insulated or high insulative value shoe is less important than having a shoe that will keep your feet dry. So that's also because there's a lot of interventions you can do. You can typically run these types of puddle boots with very thick wool socks to help boost insulation value in the shoe. Um, so really when it comes down to it, it's not so much of you know making sure that you have an ultra insulative boot it's just making sure that you have a really really solid barrier between the invariable wetness on the outside and your body so that's something that's important to note as it does get colder once again circling back to the steger mucklucks as it gets colder this is where we want to like when we're starting to talk about you know 10 above and on down to like negative 40 to negative 60 that's when we want to start looking again at mucklucks uh, muck looks and bunny boots are going to be very solid and once again properly heat or properly treated mucklucks are going to be in my opinion they're my personal favorite and my personal choice and that is because as I just explained before bunny boots are really good at keeping heat in but they also keep everything else in so you're talking about lots of moisture so do be mindful that if you are going to run bunny boots in the winter in extreme colds like negative 30 negative 20 negative 40 um, you're going to want to have multiple and when I mean multiple I'm talking about like four to five pairs of socks depending on of course how long you're going to be out but you're going to be changing socks basically twice a day at minimum so you're going Going to want to have multiple pairs of heavy thick wool socks and be prepared to, to change them in bunny boots. That is the one advantage to mucklucks that isn't really talked about is because mucklucks once again are usually or typically a more breathable um, system and they usually have wool slash leather slash either cordura or canvas. Um, all of those components wool Cordura canvas uh, leather are all breathable materials. So you're going to have a lot more breathability in something like this. So changing your socks and keeping moisture um, is keeping moisture at bay is going to be a lot easier. Now, it doesn't mean that you can go out for a multi-day trip in mucklucks without multiple pairs of socks. In the winter, when it comes to footwear, multiple pairs of socks is key. So always have at least you know three to four different pairs besides the ones that you're wearing um, of high degree of wool, like 80 plus percent wool socks on or in your backpack, like in, in your per, on your person or in your backpack, sorry. Words are complicated, English is hard, but um, this is going to be the like greatest kind of way you can combat any type of sweat that will accumulate. So not to say that mucklucks are perfect, but you can expect to go through a lot less um, socks and a lot deal with a lot less moisture if you are running mucklucks, even if they're treated with things like snow seal. Um, if they're properly treated, they're going to be a lot more breathable. So in extreme cold environments, that's when I do recommend going back to mucklucks and choosing them because if it's just freeze and not a freeze thaw type situation, then it's going to be a lot more applicable to have that type of footwear that is going to just be very, very thermally regulating. So anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this. Hopefully you found this useful. Hopefully this helps you guys out with wintertime footwear. It is a definite um, kind of complex situation, but it's a lot easier than um, some people make it. Just make sure that, like I said, you want to prioritize in freestyle situations, keeping your feet absolutely dry. In those situations, dry feet are more important than warm feet because dry feet will become warm at some point. Typically speaking, this isn't like 100% of the time, but typically speaking, this is the way. So anyways, if there's that, and then um, once again, in absolute cold environments where it's just freeze, no longer freeze thaw, freeze thaw, you're going to want to prioritize thermal retention. So going to things like mucklucks and bunny boots with plenty of socks is going to be key. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.